Time for some serious, game-changing talk. So let me tell you a little secret. In order to do great edge rendering styles, you should reverse the order of everything that I've already taught you. Well, wait a minute. So previously you were provided with a model and you edged it with the constraints that the model has already. That method decoupled the real freestyle workflow. But the reason why we presented it that way is because we were building your knowledge around the features of freestyle. Basically, it was all paint the fence and wax on, wax off. But now you're masters of those features and you can think from the other way around. Let's start with the model, this boat. You can find it in stage 14's folder. I know this is the same method as before where I show you the model and then show you how to edge it. But this time we are going into the thinking process of the modeling of this boat. Let's call it modeling for style. It's very intuitive and similar to a previous stage where I mentioned about thinking lines as if you're sketching them out. This time, the method adds much greater depth into the line rendering. By looking at the rendered results, it's clear that there is more thought put into the geometry side of the render. To mimic the wood textures with lines, we add extra geometry on the model while we're modeling. In order to do it correctly, you have to think about the geometry and what line types will produce those lines. Then model with the added geometry, either by changing topology, merging or separating objects, or splitting seams. These are just a few ways to do it though. There's nearly an infinite way to produce better line styles. First, it's very important to look from the camera view. The reason is so that you can roughly sense how dense and balanced the lines will be. That way, you can avoid lines from turning into the blob. Second is line details. Pay attention to this especially when you have a lot of depth. You can use the distance from camera or object modifier, but this is really not efficient if the boat is 100 meters away and only occupies a few hundred pixels. On this boat, for example, you can turn off edge mark line type or use only one, like contour line type. This will lower the view map complexity and render time. Also, let's look at these rowing paddles. They're relatively small in the render and thus only need outer silhouette. Third is style. There are two very famous renders to illustrate this point. The left illustration is the real amount of details, which is too much detail and too busy. An audience enjoys less of that render as the mind is overloaded with redundant information. The right has the correct amount of detail and is also a style. Screen space wise, the line density is lower and it allows the viewer's mind to fill in the empty spaces with details. This allows less work in modeling and shorter render times with lower geometry complexity. In freestyle, line art or NPR in general, less is more. Okay, back to the boat. You can see that the middle of the boat has less lines and now you know why. Speaking of the boat, the last example is epic. And there are boats too. The file name is venetianview.blend. When you open it, you're going to say, what? But really, the file came from a very humble beginning. Let's view the overall process of making this composition. It all started with this composition. The idea is to get interesting shapes in perspective so that we can use it for later. Also, make sure to scale the models to real size measurements or your camera will be using the wrong lens ratio to the object. Anyway, that's deep stuff and totally out of scope for a freestyle course. Here, the lines are colored, well, because we can. A few poles are added, so we can add a veranda above them. This makes the composition much more dynamic. This sketch on top of the render is one of the most important parts of the process. With this, we can estimate how much details to model. Also, make sure lines are spread all over and balanced. This nips the dark patch blobby problem in the butt before it even happens. Here, we added more details to the sketch and also colored wooden parts of the objects. Here, we process with the plan in the sketch. Change the poles, add a few door frames, and don't forget the left staircase. We're making sure we have clean topology so that if we need to add details later, we can do it without much modification on the existing model. Here, we introduce organic elements. Also, add an array of beams on the top left, which is super easy to model. More doors, windows, vegetation, and again, clean topology. Top veranda reel done, and moving to the right, a pub sign and a window. The wooden frame of the rightmost building wasn't properly edged, and if you're a careful observer, you'll notice a few things moving around. We deliberately did that. They sort of add errors, making it more human or organic. Next, we throw away a few lines and edge mark edges for style. The edge marks are on the board outside the big veranda and the wood frame to the right. More door frame and windows to the right. And here we change many things. The most notable ones are, we change the building's height. The main reason to do that is to break converging lines, 
pointing into the vanishing point in the middle of the composition. This introduced dynamics more pleasing to the eye. Again, we intentionally add some errors. Here we removed more lines and added a water ripple line style. Water is a separate line set inside a group. If you observe carefully, there's a pull in the distance, and we use that to break the vertical parallel lines. We add a bridge with banners, more green stuff, and a mid-ground building. Using the conifer-like plant helped kind of break up some of the repeating shapes. We added another potted plant in the foreground, modeled a mid-ground building, and somehow we made a face. Nice. So let's see, we added bricks in the foreground, filling some of the empty spaces, this is part of the less is more method mentioned earlier. We move the pole in the background to cover the new parallel line created by the building. Then we finish the background building, adding details, the banners, and the new windows to the left side of the foreground. Here we add some details to the newly added windows in the foreground. And now, time to add the gondolas. Not gondola, this isn't a ski resort. Anyway, we put three of them, since three is a magic number after all. We render this with a shadow pass which is a shortcut for a later process. And finally, we get a full line art on a white background. And this is how you make a nice composition. Hey, now we have a coloring page. So the key processes are, make sure that you have a great vantage point as a base of the composition, and use basic shapes at the real world scale to do that. You sketch on top of the composition to approximate details, also making sure the lines don't get too dense. Build the scene with edges as the main priority. And then isolate models either with layers or local view when test rendering. That'll save you a lot of render time. Lastly, remember to group objects to separate line styles. And you're all done, right? Well, not quite yet. We still need to see the meshes of this composition. In this case, we have a single point of view composition, so it will only look good from the camera view. With that, it's basically WYSIWYG, or what you see is what you get. And as with all great compositions, there will be objects in the foreground, middle ground, and background. In this composition, everything in the front of the bridge is foreground. The middle ground objects are behind the bridge. And finally, the furthest building is the background, which is where the least details are needed. You can dig deeper into the meshes of the objects at your own leisure. Now we are moving to the edge type and line set. There are two main object groups, water and everything except the water. For everything except the water object, Edge types, silhouette, crease, and edge mark are used. They were decided while modeling. Because there are only two selections, we group the water object and exclude it from this line set, which is similar to saying, select everything except water. For water, we use the edge type suggestive contour. Ridge and valley can also be used, but we prefer suggestive contour for this. Group to inclusive for the group water, which is similar to saying, select only water and nothing else. Moving on to the line styles for the building line set. We used sketchy with three rounds, a distance from camera modifier for color and thickness. For geometry modifiers, spatial noise is activated with a small amplitude and scale. To make these settings appear clearly, we used a sampling of two instead of 10 for the base sampling modifier. Now for the water line set. On the stroke sub tab, we select to draw only edges that are 20 pixels or more, which means we delete short edges from rendering. A distance from camera modifier for color and thickness again. On the geometry sub-tab, Bezier curve with an error of 50. Here we use default sampling as we don't need as many fine details. Basically, those are all the freestyle settings we need. Not so basic, but not so hard either. You just need to understand how they work. The next part is, how do you get the line to render for composition use? By composition, I mean getting the render ready for post-processing. The first thing in this part is to go to the render layer settings. Here, we turn off all include passes except for freestyle. We only want the lines and not the solid render and sky color. Essentially, the lines will be opaque and everything else will be transparent. So now we render, and we get nice dark lines with the transparent background. Let's jump into the compositor. Here we have a switch, and it bypasses the already done composition. Now we turn it off. Let's check each node one by one. To make the lines softer, we blur them slightly and alpha over the original. We don't use the mix node because you'll lose the alpha information here. Next, we need an image as a background to put the lines on. The background image can be a render layer from any render engine, like internal renderer or cycles or an image you painted yourself. In this case, Sage painted one for us. The line is alpha over the image. The factor is lowered to make the lines alpha blend with the background image. 
The next two nodes are a little of a color adjustment for style. And we're done. You can admire it by printing the render on some paper, frame it, hang it on a wall, and then smile at it for long hours because it's so worth it. But the scene is still slightly incomplete. It needs some human characters or something. So show us how you can improve the scene. And now the bloopers. Not everything goes as planned. We actually failed on our first attempt and you can see that on layer 11. We found that to make a more interesting composition, we needed to break out of the straight box composition. And maybe you can use such advice too. Anyway, time to sum it all up. To do line art, always try to think of the screen space line density. Sketching on the screen space is an excellent procedure to visualize and ensure line density is almost even and balanced. Make the models with freestyle line types as guidance. Again, model for style. Always remember that the rendered lines can go to any image, even painted ones. So if you like, you can use freestyle with Cycles, Renderman, Arnold, Mantra, V-Ray, Maxwell, Octane, Mental Ray, Psychopath, or one you code yourself. You can do as you like. Or you can do it the other way around, like export the rendered freestyle lines to be composited in After Effects or Nuke. Sky's the limit.